everyone. It's great to connect with you again today. Sunday morning, we'll meet for worship outdoors at 8.30 and indoors at 10. I'll be preaching from 1 Thessalonians 4 about dancing and enemy-occupied territory. I also want to invite you to a gathering this Sunday night at 6 p.m., a farewell celebration for Paul Shea and Amanda Cox. It will be a come-and-go reception, but there will be a brief program at 6.30. Yesterday, I saw a picture of our two grandchildren heading into the building for the last days of school. They were walking hand-in-hand, hand and it was such a sweet picture. It seems hard to believe that they're eight and five. The years are going by so quickly, and we felt this with our own children. I suspect you feel it, too. Perhaps the picture was even more poignant for me because at our elders meeting this week, it was my turn to do a brief devotional. I pondered what to say and decided to read the group a story, one of my favorite stories. It's an old story. It's probably a story you've read, probably a story you've read to others. Dr. Seuss's Horton Hatches the Egg. This is the story of a lazy bird who doesn't want the responsibility of sitting on her egg, waiting for it to hatch, so she talks Horton the Elephant into taking her place. It's kind of a ludicrous story as most of Dr. Seuss's stories are, but it's fascinating all the same. Horton sits on the nest on a, on a tree branch that he's propped up, and he sits through all kinds of horrible weather. He sits while his friends make fun of him. He sits while his friends go off and play, even though he wants to play also. He sits when hunters approach. He sits when the hunters capture him, the tree, the nest, and the egg, and sell him to a circus in New York. As the circus travels the country, he sits and sits and sits. And Horton says, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful, 100%. And then after 51 weeks of sitting on the egg, it begins to crack. And out of the pieces of red and white shell, from the egg that he sat on so long and so well, Horton the elephant saw something whiz. It had ears and a tail and a trunk, just like his. I love that story. The story and the picture of our grandchildren reminded me of two passages of Scripture. Joshua 4 tells of the Israelites crossing the Jordan River. And Joshua calls the, the, the men together and picks one man from each tribe and says, take a huge stone and put it in the middle of the river. And he says, in the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? You tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. And when it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. And these stones are to be a memorial, a reminder to the people of Israel forever. And the second scripture is Judges 2. Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. And they buried him in the land of his inheritance, in the hill country of Ephraim. And after that, the whole, after that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. And then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Those two stories remind me of our calling to be faithful to those who come after us. We don't know why the next generation forgets the Lord or what he's done, but they do. And we might want to blame them for their poor memories, but maybe the blame rests on those who were supposed to teach them, supposed to model for them, supposed to be an example for them. These passages remind me that one of the callings of Jesus' followers is to be faithful. Because ultimately, those who come after us, those who we influence, tend to take on the characteristics of what they see in us. It's a great responsibility. It's also a great privilege. And my prayer for me and for you is that we will sense God's grace helping us to be faithful so that those who come after us might have a passion and a desire to be lifelong followers of Jesus because of something they see in us. Father, thank you for the privilege and the responsibility of sharing you with others. Forgive us when we are less than faithful. Give us grace to be agents of faith and in our example, plant deep within us and others the truth of who you are, that we might know you and follow you all of our lives. Amen. Thanks again for joining me. Have a wonderful day.